Hello and welcome to the latest of our stories from the Strong Rooms, talks informed by the narratives found within the collections here at Hull History Centre. In May 2021, we commemorate the 80th anniversary of the Hull Blitz. During the Second World War, Hull was one of the heaviest bombed cities in the UK. 82 raids between 1940 and 1945 resulted in the deaths of around 1,200 people and over 3,000 injured. Countless others were affected by psychological trauma and homelessness. While the raids were spread over five years, albeit with substantial gaps, it is perhaps the raids of May 1941 which exemplify Hull's wartime experience. In the early hours of the 8th of May 1941, German bombs rained down on the centre of Hull in what was one of the worst raids of the Second World War the city experienced. It was the first of two consecutive nights when heavy raids of high explosives, parachute mines and incendiary bombs hit East and North Hull, the docks and, more unusually, the city centre. Many lives were lost and many prominent buildings damaged or destroyed. One of the most well-known incidents was the destruction of the offices of the Prudential Assurance Company in Queen Victoria Square. The photograph taken the next morning of the tower of the building standing at an angle among the ruins is the iconic image of the Hull Blitz. Perhaps because of the building's prominence in the city centre as much as anything else, many rumours circulated at the time. In the 80 years since the bombing of the Prudential, many questions have been asked. Hull History Centre holds the report of the city engineer into the incident, allowing us to tell the official story of the Prudential. Although the building hasn't stood for 80 years, the discovery of the remains of the building by Humberfield Archaeology during the 2015-16 redevelopment of the city centre by Eurovia Contracting enabled us to connect again with the tragedy. The Prudential Assurance Company was founded in 1848 and by the end of the 19th century was one of the country's major life assurance providers. Many will remember the man from the Prue who called door-to-door -door for the weekly premiums on life assurance policies. At its headquarters in London, and in many towns and cities round the country, the Prudential built grand office blocks, designed by leading architect Alfred Waterhouse, reflecting the scale and reputation of the company. The Hull offices of the Prudential Assurance Company were built in 1903-4 to two designs by Waterhouse on a corner site at the end of the newly developed King Edward Street. The focal point of the building was Waterhouse's trademark tower, which dominated what was then known as City Square, but what is now Queen Victoria Square. The tower was occupied by the main staircase of the building, together with a lift shaft and, right at the top under the spire, a round office which must have had some of the best views in Hull. In the basement of the building was Ye Mecca Café with its associated smoking room and kitchen. Ye Mecca was part of a chain which had premises in several Prudential offices across the country and which was the commercial ancestor of the Mecca Bingo chain. The café continued in use until the outbreak of the war. At the centre of the basement was the boiler room, which by the time of the Second World War housed a gas-fired heating system. The boiler room is circled in red on this plan. On the ground floor of the building was the public office of Prudential Assurance. As can be seen from this photograph from 1904, the public office was a large space, lavishly decorated with glazed tiles, some of which have been excavated. There were also a number of lock-up shops on the ground floor. The upper floors were given over to office space. In 1905, Siemens Limited had their Hull offices in the Prudential Building. In 1939, Smales, Holtby and Gray chartered accountants, now Smales Goldie, had offices there. After the outbreak of war, the basement of the Prudential building was designated as an air raid shelter for the inhabitants of the surrounding area. 
Some of them sought refuge there when the air raid sirens sounded shortly after midnight on 8th of May 1941. Probably about 3am, although the records are unclear as to precisely when it happened, the Prudential was hit by a bomb. By dawn on the 8th of May, the building was a smouldering ruin. Only the tower remained, standing at an angle. It was demolished for safety reasons the next day. It was known that people had been sheltering in the basement, and immediately many rumours started to develop about what had happened. It was thought that naval personnel, including members of the Women's Royal Naval Service, the Wrens, had been in the building when it was hit as the Admiralty had offices there. It was believed that hoses had been turned on the flames and feared that people sheltering in the basement had been drowned. One rumour was that as many as 200 people had been killed in the incident. It was said that rather than recover the bodies, quicklime was used to bury them in situ. Because of the potential impact of the rumours on morale, the City Engineers Department, which was in charge of rescue, demolition and repair, investigated the incident very carefully. Their report, marked as secret, recorded their initial findings. The building was hit by a high explosive bomb, which appears to have demolished the boiler room in the middle of the basement, fracturing the gas main. It may indeed have fallen straight down the light well at the centre of the building and blown out the wall of the boiler room at the bottom. Within 15 minutes, the Prudential was a white-hot inferno. In the opinion of the city engineer, there was no doubt that the people sheltering in the basement would have been killed instantly. All the bodies subsequently recovered had been badly burned. Because of the heat, it was impossible for rescue parties to enter the ruins for 48 hours. The ground and upper three floors had collapsed into the basement. Steel girders from the roof hampered the clearance operation and had to be dragged out of the way by a steamroller. Military help had to be called on to move the rubble before the basement could be accessed. The report details the traumatic facts of what was found when access to the basement had been gained. Only ten bodies could be recovered, but only six were identifiable. Sadly, other remains found suggested that more than ten people had been in the basement when it was hit. Trying to work out who had been killed proved harder. Identification of the victims proved difficult. No record had been kept of who had been sheltering there, and there had been no air raid warden present. The staff of the City Engineers Department took great trouble to try and establish who had been in the basement at the time. The Air Raid Warden Service didn't know how many had sought shelter in the basement. The Admiralty, which had office space in the building, seems to have been actively unhelpful or strangely evasive. At different times the Rescue Service leader was told that there had been eight, five and then one of the Admiralty staff on duty in the building that night, but no Wrens or civilian staff. This may not have been the case. One of the casualties, a ship overseer for the Admiralty, is listed among the civilian war dead. The landlord of the Punch Hotel on the other side of Queen Victoria Square said that six of his guests, who were likely to have sheltered in the Prudential, were missing. The caretaker of the Prudential building and his family were also missing. Remarkably, it was learned that one person had escaped from the building. This was Arthur Maslin, a staff member at Smales, Holtby and Grey, who had been fire-watching in the offices that night. He scrambled out of the blazing building. He was able to tell the rescue service team leader about the people who had been sheltering in the building, including one of his colleagues from Smales, who had been fire-watching with him, and who was now missing. The city engineer concluded that 16 people had been killed in the destruction of the Prudential building. By comparing his report with the role of civilian war dead, together with the Hull Corporation civilian war dead index cards held here, it's possible to produce a list of the 16 casualties. They were a family of six, mother, father, son, daughters and son-in-law, a family of four, a family of three, 
The wife of a corporal in the Army Medical Corps who had been among the first to come forward to say that his wife was missing, Arthur Maslin's fellow fire watcher and the Admiralty ship overseer already mentioned. The oldest of the victims was 54, the youngest only four years old. The Prudential incident has a special resonance with the people of Hull. Other individual bombing incidents had higher casualty rates. For instance, 57 people were killed when the communal shelter in Ellis Terrace, Holderness Road, was hit by a parachute mine on 16th of April 1941. But those two nights in May seared Hull citizens because of the severity of the air raids and the scale of the impact on the heart of the city. In 1951, unusually for any British city, a war memorial to the civilian casualties of air raids was erected at Northern Cemetery where many of them had been buried. When Hull Civic Society wanted to mark the Blitz of May 1941, the site of the Prudential Building was chosen as the site of a plaque. It records that here stood the tower of the Prudential Building by Waterhouse and Son until destroyed in the 1941 May Blitz, when in two nights 420 people were killed in Hull and 350 were badly injured. Although this has given rise to the misapprehension that 420 people were killed in the Prudential itself, the figure is for casualties across the city during those two terrible nights in May 1941. However, the Prudential tragedy is remembered as one of the most notorious incidents of the Second World War in Hull, and the photographs of the tower of the building remain its most striking image.